People are using AI for everything these days, including baking. But can it make a better chocolate chip cookie recipe than mine? We asked ChatGPT to come up with the best ever chocolate chip cookie recipe, compared it with mine, and here are the results. So the first cookie dough we're gonna make is my best ever chocolate chip cookie. This is a fan favorite on our website and my personal favorite chocolate chip cookie. So the first step is to mix your dry ingredients together, your flour, your salt, and your baking soda. Just mix it all together, then set it over to the side. So here I have my bowl of melted butter. Now into this, I'm going to add in white sugar and dark brown sugar. And then give these a really good whisk for around a minute. You want to whisk it until it almost emulsifies and gets nice and smooth. Once it looks like this, we can crack in an egg, whisk that in, crack in our other egg, give that a whisk. Then of course, one of my favorite ingredients in chocolate chip cookies, a nice big dash of vanilla extract, and then give that a whisk in. Now add your dry ingredients in here, give them a mix around until combined, and then lastly add in chocolate chunks. So I'm using bittersweet chocolate for mine, so the chocolate is really, really rich. Also, I chop up chocolate bar and I don't use chocolate chips. This is the secret to my best ever chocolate chip cookie. Okay, so that's it. My best ever chocolate chip cookie dough is ready. I'm gonna set that over to the side. The next one we're going to make is our AI dough and let's just keep a close eye and see how it differs and is it any better. So we asked ChatGPT to create the best ever chocolate chip cookie recipe and this is what it came up with. Brown Butter Supreme Chocolate Chip Cookie Perfection. Now, if that's not gonna be the best cookie in the world, I don't know what is. Um, I've read through the recipe, I have all my ingredients here. There's a lot of different things that it does in this recipe that I don't do in mine, um, which I think will, you know, hopefully will elevate it and make it the best ever chocolate chip cookie. So we're soon gonna find out. So I'm just gonna start out by doing the first few steps. So the first thing we're gonna do is mix together our dry ingredients. Here I have my plain all-purpose flour and into this I'm going to add in bread flour. So truth be known, I did have to Google why do you use bread flour in a cookie? I've only seen this once before in a restaurant that I worked in in San Francisco and I never knew why. And it says, by swapping out bread flour for all purpose, we're raising the protein to enable more gluten formation and higher liquid retention in the dough, meaning you get a chewier cookie, which I'm all about. So I'm okay with this. Into our flours, we're going to add in our raising agents, baking soda and baking powder. Now my cookies only call for baking soda because I love a chewy crinkle cookie on top. Baking powder, from my experience, gives you a cakey cookie and makes them kind of rise thick. So um, not my normal way to do it, but we'll see what happens. And then one teaspoon of fine sea salt, which I am a yes on. And then just mix these ingredients together. Okay, lovely, those are our dry ingredients. Our next step is to brown ourselves some butter, so head over to the stove with me. So put your butter in a heavy bottom saucepan over low heat. Now browning butter is definitely a sensory thing. It's hard for me to tell you timing. So it'll take less than 10 minutes, but honestly stand here, take a look at it, make sure it's not getting too brown. It's smelling nutty, but not burnt. When it starts to go brown, it'll actually keep on browning pretty fast. So keep an eye and then take it off the stove. So browning butter is not something I do in my cookie recipe and I think it's a really nice idea. Browning butter gives you a lovely nuttiness and just kind of like a uh, sweetness to your butter, to your cookie, it just makes it really lovely. So I'm interested to see the results of this, but I guarantee you it's just going to taste amazing regardless. So this is great. It's nice and brown, it's smelling nutty, not burnt. I'm gonna take this off the stove now, it's ready. So there is my brown butter. Into this, I'm going to add in my white sugar and I'm gonna add in my dark brown sugar, just like my cookie. But this recipe calls for an electric hand mixer and it says get in there and whip it up on high speed for around two minutes or so until it's nice and smooth. Pretty sure it's probably the same results that I got from whisking by hand, but we'll see. So I've been creaming this now for two minutes. It kind of looks the exact same, didn't re-emulsify really like the way mine does. So for eggs, this recipe is a little bit different. It calls for a whole egg, but also an egg yolk. And I think that's for richness. And I saw that a lot in cookie doughs, asking for egg yolks rather than whole eggs. So let's see if it makes a difference. We'll add in one at a time and just cream it in. 
There you go. It's actually starting to emulsify now, like the way mine did. I feel a bit better now that I'm seeing this. Okay, lovely. Next step, it says to add in our vanilla extract. So just like my cookie dough, it's actually asking for two teaspoons of vanilla extract. You know, it's funny because AI has to be pulling these recipes from somewhere, right? So I wonder if some of my recipe is actually in this recipe. You'd never know. <laughs> okay, lovely. Now into this, we're going to add in our flour mixture. I'm just gonna mix this together with my spatula until the dough comes together. I know you can't smell this, but the smell of that nutty butter is absolutely delicious and the kind of smells a little bit salty almost. Okay, chocolate. Now, this is where we differ. For this recipe, it calls for milk chocolate, semi-sweet chocolate, and bittersweet chocolate, which is a whole combo of chocolate. I'm intrigued by this. I have to say I am not a milk chocolate fan. I'm gonna stay open-minded. Uh, I like my chocolate very dark, uh, very uh, like rich, uh, more cocoa than sugar. And uh, this is a combination of everything, which some people might like. So I'm gonna add that in there. In the recipe, it does say you can use chips or discs or chocolate bar, which I like because I don't know if you've seen my controversial TikTok. Do not use chocolate chips in your cookies. I do not use chips and discs are okay. You can probably see this for yourself, but this dough is very dry and stiff. So I'm not sure what kind of results that's going to yield, but I'm gonna bring in my dough and let's compare the two. So just look at how different these are. The AI one, like I said, is a much firmer, drier dough. Um, I'm hoping that doesn't mean that it's going to be bad. It's much darker because of the brown butter and I think it has a little bit more brown sugar. Mine is um, melted butter also, but not browned. It has some brown sugar, but I don't think as much as this one. And it uh, looks like it also yields a lot more. Uh, mine is quite a typical soft, squishy cookie dough. So here we are. The AI recipe specified that when you make this dough, it must be aged for a minimum of 24 hours, which I am all about. I age all of my doughs. So to give everybody a fighting chance, I made my dough in advance also and aged it for 24 hours. So these doughs are at the exact same stage. The one thing that the AI dough said was sprinkle a little bit of sea salt on the top before they get baked. I think that's a nice touch. I don't do that on my cookies. We're gonna do it here. Okay, awesome. Now there's nothing left for us to do but to get them into the oven. So bake my cookies off at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for around 14 minutes. This gives you a lovely crackly cookie. So to bake the AI cookie, your guess is as good as mine because they didn't give a temperature in the recipe. However, I am an expert and I say bake your cookie at 375 degrees Fahrenheit, 190 degrees Celsius for roughly 12 to 14 minutes. So here we are, the moment of truth. Both trays are out of the oven. Let's get in here and take a look at the results. So first things first, these look very different. Now let's start out with my ones. We're used to my recipe. They spread a lot, that's the nature of them. They get lovely and crinkly. That's because of the baking soda and also the aging process helps with that. My cookies, just like these ones, are supposed to be chewy. So you bake them just right and you see that the way they're kind of doughy in the middle there, kind of dark. This is the result that I love from my perfect chocolate chip cookie. So let's talk about these cookies. So there is a big difference in the look here. These didn't spread um, very much at all. They stayed really thick and the dough is a little bit darker because it was darker with the different types of chocolate and the browned butter. I think with these two cookies, the real tell will actually be in the flavor and in the texture. There is bread flour in here. There's three different types of chocolate. There is baking powder and there's browned butter. So you'd think the flavor would be a bit superior. Mine doesn't have browned butter. It only has baking soda, hence the crinkly and not the mounds. And it has one type of chocolate. So this is the texture of my cookie. Mine is a thin cookie, but it's also gooey in the middle. It's nice and soft and doughy, but not underbaked. It's crispy on the outside, chewy in the middle. Let's crack this guy open. Yeah, look at that. 
also nice and doughy in the middle didn't look the best on the outside but it's lovely and doughy in the middle melty chocolate I can taste the brown butter it's nutty it definitely definitely adds extra flavor I'm not a fan of milk chocolate I'm looking for an amazing chocolate chip cookie and milk chocolate would not be my go-to so I'm not loving that now the addition of baking powder I don't always love to see that because what happens is it can give you a rise in your cookie and you end up with a thick cakey cookie also remember our dough was really dry this is crisp almost falling apart like a shortbread not chewy like the description of the cookie was supposed to be it's actually kind of um, shortbready and dry so my personal opinion these are not the best ever chocolate chip cookies I do not think they look great I think the texture is a bit too dry but the flavor is good I would give it a four out of five for flavor because of the browned butter the salt the vanilla but not for that milk chocolate Ugh. All in all, I would say ChatGPT had the right idea, but what they're missing again is that human element, that touch to know what's right and wrong in baking. I'm gonna to stick to my chocolate chip cookie. Stick around here to check out lots more awesome baking recipes and I'll see you again really soon.